has this whole process been like for you? It has, it has been uh, something worth of working on. Mm -hmm. You know, as citizens, uh, this is some of the responsibilities we have to support the government in their duty. And I believe that uh, uh, holding the, guy, the president or the government or leadership accountable is our role and it's a way of supporting them. So it has been worth working on. What was yesterday like? Yesterday, we had a good news okay, from court. Now, this is it. We actually filed a, an application to the Supreme Court mm -hmm. seeking two things. That one, the injunction placed on us, which we said was unlawful, be quashed. Mm -hmm. And then two, that the court make an order to restrain the police from uh, unlawfully interfering uh, on our right or with our right mm -hmm. to demonstrate. Yeah. So these were the two things we filed for. And then one, uh, one, the injunction was quashed, but the other one was not granted. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what the police is happy about. Yeah. Unlawfully, mm -hmm. unlawfully interfering with our right. Mm -hmm. That is what they're happy about. But we had a good news, but as Manasi Azuri said, uh, theoretically we won, but practically they still have mechanisms to pull us down. So we're still suffering. How did you feel when you read the police's uh, communique? Because it, it took a while before they also brought that out. I think. Having read the police report, I wasn't surprised mm -hmm. because already we knew that was the agenda. You know, we realized that the police has resorted to treating uh, fix the country as a threat to safety and order, mm -hmm. not as an urgent matter. Mm -hmm. That is what they are saying it. Mm. So we weren't surprised that they came out with this press release. We, we, we were actually expecting it. Mm -hmm. But how does that make you feel, though, considering the fact that, I mean, I, for one, um, believe that there are so many things that need fixing in this country okay. um, and and I'm all for the call for those who are responsible and in charge of different spaces um, to do what they need to do to make sure that whatever has to be fixed is fixed right but how does that make you feel knowing that you're trying to push for Ghana to be better and for them to f look at you as an enemy yeah how does that make you feel already already we knew that the system is broken. Now, when we talk about a broken system, this is one of them. Whenever you tend to stand for the truth, you are seen as an enemy. And it's part of the broken system. Mm -hmm. You understand that? So it only, uh, uh, it is, it, it only makes it this evident that the system is broken. Mm -hmm. I, to me personally, I don't feel anything. Because I know we are living in a broken system, which is being governed by a fractured constitution. Mm -hmm. Are you getting it? Mm -hmm. So expecting or what the reply we have, we have gotten from the police or whatsoever only, only shows that we are living in a broken system. Mm -hmm. It does not give me any other impression. Now let's take it back to a few weeks ago when um, the hashtag went viral on social mm -hmm. media. What were some of the concerns you heard from the everyday citizen you because know, I think the beautiful thing about this movement is that everyone identifies with it irrespective yeah. of uh, color race tribe political affiliation everyone understands that there's some level of fixing that we need to yeah, have sure. in this country no a lot of people tend to complain about the high cost of living yeah. unemployment bad road networks among others you know, when you look at some of the basic amenities that we need or our people need as, as communities, when you go to rural communities, you see the, uh, the, uh, the infrastructures, you see the schools in which they learn. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people tend to post the pictures or snapshots of distance. Some people learn under trees, some people learn in death traps. Are you getting it? So most people tend to complain about uh, basically employment, high cost of living and infrastructure. That is what you see people complaining about. Yeah, and successive governments have obviously not, not addressed most addressed, of these yes. issues. Now, uh, last year, for instance, in the United States, when pe hundreds and thousands of people were dying, they still marched to the streets to, to demand justice when Trevor, um, when um, um, I'm George, George Floyd, George Floyd yeah. was, was killed. I mean, Trevor Martin was killed somewhere mm -hmm. in 2013. So for the police now to reduce this to... COVID protocols and, and, and wanting to comply with the protocols when you see people really high up in our society 
not doing the same, how does, how do, how does that make you feel? Do you, do you know what they, they wrote to the High Court? To High Court? Tell us about it. Now, they said, they stated that the purpose for which the youth had wanted to demonstrate is not urgent hmm. or pressing. That was what they, they wrote. It's not a pressing issue. So, also, so it's almost like a mindset problem where whatever you're complaining about, if it's a sanitation issue or, uh, or broken roads and gutters and all of that, for them, it's for not them, urgent. It's not urgent. It's not a pressing issue. Mm -hmm. So mm. that was what they wrote to the High Court. Wow. How did your members feel about that? We, <laughs> we were very surprised knowing that uh, a, a funeral will be more urgent than the basic needs of the people. We were very surprised. I felt like I shouldn't have been born in Ghana. At least Togo, is, Togo should have been better. You understand that? Mm. So yeah, yeah, that was what I thought to myself. Because for the police to see this as, uh, uh, these issues or the purpose for which we had wanted, they stated it clearly that a, a string of broken promises by successive governments not, is not an urgent issue. Mm -hmm. And everyone was like, how? How can the Ghana police say that this issue is not urgent and does not need uh, an urgent attention? Mm -hmm. So they wrote to the Supreme Court, uh, to the High Court. Wow. Now let's look at this government that we, 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 are, we, are, uh, we are living under. They promised us that we're going to go uh, Ghana beyond aid. We're going to industrialize to really grow the economy. Most of the manifesto promises they made theoretically sound like something that will solve all the problems that the youth are complaining about today. Uh, looking at that and comparing it to what we've been told and the realities that we live, what, what, what do you make of it? That is another broken promise. Mm -hmm. That is why we said this rise up was built on a string of broken promises. And that is what we are seeing. We, we, for, for, for ages, Ghanaians have been voting for someone they thought would have been a political Moses. They change government, they change leadership, just to see someone who will solve our problems or prefer medicaments to the predicaments we have. Now, but having uh, uh, perused the manifesto of the current government, they told us Ghana beyond aid. But what are we saying? What are we saying today? It is evident that that is another broken promise. Mm -hmm. Now. They told us about, uh, what else? You mentioned something. One district, one factory. One district, one factory. Are we saying that today? Mm -hmm. No, it is not evident. Mm -hmm. Now, so I, mostly I tend to say that we only use grammar to cover the horrors on the ground. Well, some people would argue that um, you're being utopian in your thinking and uh, you're looking for heaven when obviously it's earth that we, we live on. So um, if, for example, the government has brought in uh, companies to come and assemble cars and, to, and they are beginning the basic, the rudiments of, uh, you know, industries, you know, uh, setting up in a certain way, um, they're doing something. Some, some people would argue that and that you're expecting too much and that, you know, give them time. You know, great. That, that is their line of thinking. But let's, let's take it on the ground. Now, the basic thing is you brought out a manifesto and the people believed in you and mm. they voted for you. Mm. Now, we are not asking you to do something you have not promised us. <laughs> you understand that? You brought out a manifesto telling, that, a manifesto telling us that uh, uh, Ghana is going beyond aid. Mm. Has Ghana gone beyond aid? Mm -hmm. This is the se your second term. Mm -hmm. Has Ghana gone beyond aid? No, we are not asking for a million dollars each. We are only asking you that you do that which you promised the people, that which brought you to power. That is all we are asking for. So if someone thinks we are looking for heaven, no, we are not. We are only asking. When we started, we, anytime they ask us to itemize things that we need fixed, yes. uh, to be, uh, things that need to be fixed, I always tell them that they should revisit their manifestos mm. because we are not experts in governmental affairs or in exp uh, experts in economics or whatsoever thing. Mm -hmm. You brought something and we said, oh, wow, this is a good idea. Let us vote you in power. Mm -hmm. And we voted you into power and then you come telling us that uh, we are asking for too much. Mm. There's a message here. It's coming from Oibo Boateng. It says, and it's from um, Atrema uh, Nere, Nere, Nerebehi in Kumase. Um, and says, I, I don't see the need for the fix the country demonstration because the president uh, um, is already fixing the country. 
what what's your what would your what's your response to this in whose perspective in whose perspective mm -hmm. in whose perspective is the president fixing the country mm -hmm. is it my auntie's child who is in the village who is schooling under tree mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or someone who is somewhere in his hometown who do not have access to quality health care mm -hmm. is it in that person's perspective that's the question we should be asking mm -hmm. as at now 64 years and we still do not have quality health care and our people cannot school, uh, uh, cannot ha uh, have access to quality education, and we say we are fixing, what at all are we fixing? That is the question we should be asking ourselves. So what's the way forward? Because as it stands now, a lot of people outside Ghana are looking at Ghana as a, as a great country to come back to. We just had a year of return a few years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, we have this PR machine that positions Ghana as the, as the you know, breadwinner of Africa for everybody mm -hmm. to come to, but then young people in this country are complaining that it's difficult for them to survive. Where do we go from here? You know, it only looks, uh, it only looks good on paper. Ghana looks good on paper. It looks good on the screen. But the reality on the ground is a different thing. Someone would say that's a start, though. That is? It's a good start to look good on paper. <laughs> well, we've been looking good on paper for 64 years. <laughs> 64 years. We've been looking good on paper for 64 years. <laughs> but what's, so what's, what's the way forward for the, the way forward organization? Is this. No, good. What we are expecting is this. We are expecting leadership to listen to us, not to try silencing us. Mm -hmm. Because every mechanism, everything they have been doing is trying to just silence the voice of the people. That is not what we are asking for. Mm -hmm. We said, fit the country. You know, the constitution has a lot of loopholes and needs changing. A lot of people have campaigned for this. And that is what is used to govern this nation. It needs fixing. Mm -hmm. our, our system as a whole, you know, when uh, people, people said 100,000 people has been given jobs under NAPCOIL and things. Now, do you know the minimum wage rate? Recently, they attempt to increase it to 12 cities, 53 pesos. Yeah. pesos. If we still have that system, if you even employ everyone, we will still complain. You can complain every. Uh, you can employ everyone in this nation, but we will still complain mm -hmm. because things are not going on well. The minimum wa uh, 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 wage rate, daily minimum wage rate, is very low. Mm -hmm. How many people will be able to live on that? Mm -hmm. So you're going to uh, back to court in a few days. Yes, right? on the 14th of June. On the 14th of June. 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 What, yeah. what are your expectations? You know, and they of course filed. It's still in court, so we need yes, to they, they filed a case for an extension of the injunction. Mm -hmm. But the injunction has been quashed. Mm -hmm. I am not an expert in law, so I don't know what happens to that. Mm -hmm. It has been quashed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what happens to the case in the High Court? Yeah. Yeah, but the case there is supposed to be a substantive case that they are going to sit on the fourteenth. Yes. So they are saying that as long as they've not they've not heard from the court on the on the fourteenth, you can't do anything. Good. We 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 have been law abiding. You realize that in as much as the injunction that was placed on us was unlawful, mm -hmm. we didn't hit the street. Yeah. Yeah. We, we only want leadership to know that we are not deviants. We are not people who wants to hold a clamorous remonstration. We only want to register our displeasure. And we won't do that by destabilizing the peace that we already or we are already enjoying. Mm -hmm. No. So what we are doing now is mobilizing. We are mobilizing people from every district, from every town. So if those who are listening to us now, if you are in a district or in a town, you want to join the movement, you can just visit our, our uh, social media pages and then send us a message. Yeah. We will get in touch with you and you will help mobilize people. Okay, what, what yeah. are those pages? Let us know all the, all the ways we can contact you. Uh, we, we have GH Fix the Country on, social, uh, on Facebook, mm -hmm. on Instagram, and on Twitter. GH Fix, fix the Country. Okay. Right. Adachi Bronson, thank you so much for, for being with us. And thank you, too. It, it takes a lot of courage to, to, to do the work that you guys are doing on behalf of the entire country. So we're, we're really proud of you, and we hope that pretty soon we'll all be able to take to the streets uh, to support the, the advocacy for young people to be able to get the basic things that they deserve in this country. Are there any last words you want to share with us? I want to assure Ghanaians that, as we have already said, this movement is non-partisan and it's non-aligned. It's only a civic movement that wants the best for all of us. They can all join. We are not necessarily leaders. We are only conveners. Anyone can mobilize anywhere they are and register their